Hello and welcome to another Teacher's Corner. I'm Teacher Kirby and this episode, well, first of all, before I forget, if you like what you see, smash that like button and click that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell so you'll be notified when I make a new video. Alright, without any further ado, this week's topic, we're going to be talking about science builds. Specifically, we are going to pick apart in detail my current science build on my character. I've been asked to do this a lot, and so here we go. Buckle in. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with looking at my skills because the skills are a little different. I prefer to run a more balanced build. This works good for me. Um, so here we go. So you see, you can see the skills. I want to highlight the differences from a normal skill tree. So the biggest difference is here, the control expertise. Control expertise controls the gravity well or helps your gravity well to pull um, things into it so that it can then do more damage. Um, so I needed to take two points and I took them from uh, one point in shield restoration here and one point in hull capacity here. All right, so there we go. Control expertise. The other biggest difference that you will notice is down here, exotic particle generator. Exotic particle generators are non-negotiable in the skill tree. You must have these because every one of your space wizard abilities that you're going to use will be modified by your exotic particle generators. You want to get this up pretty high and the, one of the best ways to do that is to have that foundation of 100 points. All three equals plus 100 EPG and that's going to be non-negotiable. Okay, And then the other thing is I did put two points into improved into scientific readiness. This will lower the cooldown on the majority of my science abilities. This makes it easier for me to hit them more often. Okay, So those are the biggest differences from a standard skill tree. You can, of course, pause the screen whenever you wish to look at all of my skills if you want to copy this tree. All right, so there you go. That is the tree. Now, let's take a look at gear. All right, actually, no, sorry. Let's take a look at traits because traits are the next thing. I'm not going to talk about ground traits because that's not what we're here for. We're here for the space build. So I'm going to talk about personal space traits. Now I do have some of the normal space traits that you would use on just about any build. For example, the Ablative Shell, Duelist Fervor, um, Terran Targeting Systems, your Fleet Coordinator, and Contexts for Kings are things you would find on a good portion of um, of builds. And then there are some that are a little different. We have four that are a bit different. First we have Particle Manipulator. Particle Manipulator comes from your level 15 science crafting school. That's how you unlock it. You need to reach level 15 in the science R&D school. Okay. What this does is it slaps a whole bunch of extra critical chance and critical severity on top of your exotic damage abilities. So you'll notice this right now says plus 50 crit hit chance plus 47.3 crit hit severity for exotic damage abilities. Now I want to be clear, this adds it on top of my critical hit chance of 13.2 and my crit severity of 
point five. Okay. So this is on top of those stats. So I have an actual 63.2% crit chance for my exotic damage abilities. Okay. So that is an important, important trait. That is a non-negotiable. And then I have conservation of energy. This just gives me straight up 10% bonus damage on exotic powers. Why is this good? Bonus damage tells me this is category two. Category two is good damage. You want to have this and this stacks up to three times. Okay, so whenever you are hit by energy damage, you get an extra 10% category two exotic damage boost up to 30% total. Okay, so there you go. That is very good trait. Then you have psychological warfare. Psychological warfare increases the effectiveness of your control abilities. Okay, that means if you're using a gravity well, which if you're doing a space wizard build, you will be using a gravity well. Okay, gravity well has is a control ability because it pulls things in okay this increases the effectiveness of that pull by 20 percent all right so another non-negotiable you can buy this both of these conservation of energy and the uh, actually conservation of energy is a science ability and then the psychological warfare you can buy off of the exchange or if you have a uh, choice pack from the infinity lockbox you can choose it out of that and then you have enlightened enlightened uh, is another one you can choose out of the infinity pack or buy off of the exchange enlightened just gives you straight up 15% exotic damage and 15% hull regen Okay, we're using it for the exotic damage. That's why we want it. All right, so that's your personal traits. Those are the four different extra personal traits that you have. Then starship traits. This actually contains what I'm currently testing, which is electrified anomalies. This was made right after the summer event. Um, I used to have in here ceaseless momentum. I'll go over that real quick. So the previous trade I had in here was Ceaseless Momentum. This is really good if you're doing a Psy Torp build, which science and torpedoes tend to lend themselves hand in hand. All right, and this gives 5% bonus kinetic damage for 45 seconds and uh, resistance for 45 seconds and it stacks up to four times, or five times, sorry and reduces the recharge time of torpedoes. So this is actually quite good if you're running a side torp boat. Um, but I'm currently testing, and this is actually looking quite good, the electrified anomalies. All right, so I do have, because I am using energy weapons on my ship, I do have emergency weapon cycle. This is standard for all energy weapon builds, all builds that have energy weapons. This is a trait that you want to have. All right, and then let's get into the science traits. We have electrified anomalies. This comes off of the recent summer event ship, the Ryzen weather control vessel. And this gives uh, electrical damage. This scales with EPG, and that's reading much lower than it should. Uh, adds a severe, hold on. Adds a severe electrical charge to your bridge officer anomalies. And this includes gravity well, this includes subspace vortex, etc., etc. Okay, and it is affected by drain expertise and EPG. All right, and it also gives you extra power levels to allies within five kilometers of the anomaly. Now, this one, this next one, spore infused anomalies is like crack for your anomalies. Okay, this increases the damage 
a, by a huge amount. All right. Two foes within five kilometers of your anomalies. This is going to be everybody that gets pulled into your gravity well. All right. It gives 10,000 electrical damage. This just amps it up to the next level. This is triggered by your gravity well. This is triggered by your subspace vortex. This is triggered by very cold in space. Okay, etc., etc. Any bridge officer ability that leaves an anomaly or something behind will trigger spore infused anomalies. This is a huge must, almost must have ability. Okay, and it comes off of the Somerville for Federation and the Balt for uh, Klingons. Those are sea store ships. And then we have improved gravity well. This is a nice to have. Um, it does a couple things here. So it reduces the duration, or sorry, it increases the duration of the gravity well by 20 seconds. That makes your gravity well 40 seconds long. It reduces the recharge time of the gravity well by 20 seconds. Gravity well base recharge time is one minute. So that means it reduces the recharge time down to 40 seconds. Okay. All right. And the primary target of the gravity well suffers minus 20 all damage resistance rating for 40 seconds. So it reduces the damage resistance rating of your enemy as well as gives you in, gives you literally constant gravity well. Quite literally constant gravity well. All right, so this is a nice to have. It's not ne not needed 100%, but it is definitely nice to have. And you can get this off of the science variant of the Allied Pilot Escorts. Uh, if you just want to buy it for everyone in your uh, on your roster, get the Romulan version. Those would be the Day One escorts, and it would be the Day One Science escort. Uh, also, off of the uh, Allied pilot escorts or the Day One pilot escorts, would be the Promise of Ferocity. This is just straight up damage. Uh, for this is Category Two damage, uh, four percent bonus weapon damage. So this is for your weapons because you do need to keep them up because your weapons will help to keep your damage up in between your ability to shoot out your um, science abilities. And it'll keep your weapon damage up for the duration of combat. Uh, when using a, a pilot or tactical bridge officer ability and this stacks up to five times. Okay. And all stacks are lost when leaving combat. So this is a, a nice little trait to have. Again, not a must have, but nice to have. I find it works best for me. All right, now let's go on to space reputation. Here we have our first one, 20% uh, criticals fairy. This is a rank two, and this is advanced targeting systems. Comes from your Dyson uh, reputation. Then we have 5% critical chance, that's from Precision, which comes from the Romulan reputation. Tyler's Duality is giving me 3.2% crit chance, based on hull capacity, of course. Okay, and then I have 6.3% uh, bonus exotic damage, and that is from Particle Generator Amplifier. And then I have, this is an ability I'm testing right now. Uh, normally I would put something like uh, magnified firepower on here, but I'm testing right now Saru's Grace, which is, it gives a, a stack of, stack to self for damage and speed. And that is 1.25%. Uh, damage and speed up to 10 stacks. All right. 
And again, I'm not going to go over ground. I am going to go over the active reputation here. So we have quantum singularity manipulation. This is must use for a science build. This gives you, when you hit this, you get plus 125 at rank two, 100 on the normal one. So if you have your Romulan up to tier six, you're gonna get 125 as to all your science stats. That means your control expertise and your exotic particle generators get an extra 125 point boost for eight seconds when you hit this. Okay, so big, huge, huge thing. This is the one you hit when you want your gravity well to just destroy everything with prejudice. The other ability to pair with that would be your anti-time entanglement singularity. This is boosted by EPG. So if you hit quantum singularity manipulation and then you hit anti-time entanglement singularity, you're going to get the best one you possibly can. All right, now this does have a little bit of control as well. And then we have also boosted by EPG and control expertise is the tethered non-baryonic asteroid. And you spawn this, lasts for 20 seconds, it drags enemies toward it and deals kinetic damage over time. Okay? So those are the three that are must-haves for a science build. They're going to be very handy to use and boost things up for you. All right, now let's take a look at the gear. All right, so again, a must-have particle emission plasma torpedo launcher okay this is a must-have the cloud when you shoot off this torpedo with a torp spread it has a cloud that it shoots off called a uh, oh lord I can't remember what the cloud is but it is a cloud and it is scales with EPG okay and because it scales with EPG it ends up going through the roof when you are using a uh, when you're using a science build like this all right another good torpedo to have I don't have it on here yet is the gravimetric torpedo from the from the uh, Dyson reputation and that's another good one to have because that will spawn rifts that are also affected by your control expertise and EPG and those just devastate everything in their path okay um, now I choose chose to have all polarons on here not necessary but that's what I chose to do I did get the morphogenic Polaron energy weapon. Okay. Again, not a necessity. Uh, but this one, however, is the advanced Thoron infused Polaron weapon. There is an anti proton variant if you wanted to go with that instead. That is fine. But you must have an advanced Thoron infused beam ray from the um, Delta reputation and that goes with the Neutronic Torpedo Launcher and the Bioneural Gel Pack. Now this three-piece set is not necessarily a must-have. I have the three-piece set because that gives me the Isokinetic Cannon. Now the isokinetic cannon, you can see it here, scales with exotic particle generator. Okay, so the isokinetic cannon gives us a really good uh, one hit. See it has 20,000 
291 kinetic damage that ignores shields. That is a really good one hit ability and it's nice to have. I usually save it for those times in between shooting off my science abilities that I need something a little something extra. So I save that. It's nice to have. Is it it's not, I want to be clear, that is not part of the science meta right now to have that, but it is something that I like to have. All right. Rolling right along, right along, right along. Then I have the temporal four piece. Now, again, this is not actually part of the science meta. The science meta is to have the temporal warp core and temporal shields and then have the colony deflector and competitive engines. I prefer the temporal four piece because that gives me, here's my more details, that gives me access to, where is it? There it is, temporal fracture. Temporal fracture scales with control expertise and exotic particle generator. So Temporal Fracture is again one of those nice little abilities. This will shoot off four at four enemies. Okay. This will shoot off a little ability that will just devastate them. Okay. So that's a nice little ability to have. And again, I save that like I do the Isokinetic Cannon. I save it for those in between times when I've killed. 98% of things on the map and there's just that one thing that wasn't pulled into my gravity well. Okay, now let's get into consoles because this is your bread and butter. This is what's going to give you your um, your stats, these scary good stats or scary high stats of, or is it like 473? and 308 respectively for control expertise and EPG. Okay. Now, so first we start with, we have two restorative particle focusers and two exotic particle focusers. You could go all one, all exotic or all restorative. Doesn't really matter if you go restorative, make sure you have something that will be a heal that will constantly be charging them. For example, uh, Ox to Sif, Auxiliary to Structural Integrity Field, is a good one that um, that is procced quite frequently or activated quite frequently that will charge them up. Um, I have two exotics because they will trigger off of my exotic abilities when I use them and two restorative because they'll trigger off of my heals when I use them. Okay, and what these do, this gives me, this is where my exotic particle generator numbers and control expertise numbers are coming from. This is how you push them through the roof, okay, is you use these consoles. These come from the research lab. And then I have exotic particle field exciter. So this comes from uh, crafting science level 15. You can buy these off of the exchange, but I do have the EPG mod on it, modifier on it, which gives me a whole bunch of EPG or exotic particle generators. It also increases my maximum shield capacity and gives me some benefits when I heal my shield. Okay. All right. So these are how I get number one. Every time that this triggers, it has a chance of giving me bonus exotic damage. Okay, and this is for both all four of them. Okay, so there you go. So this I can have as much as uh, six times four, twenty-four percent bonus exotic damage, and multiply that by five. So I can have as much as plus 100% bonus exotic damage from these at any one time. Okay. Now, 
So those that's why those are super important. Then I have the conductive RCS. This gives me turn rate. This gives me shield resistance and extra turn rate um, when I am healed. So there you go, as well as because it has the control X modifier, it gives me control expertise. Okay. Now, those are your standard consoles. Oh, I forgot this one. And then the chronometric capacitor. This comes from running time and tide. Okay, and this gives me um, gives me some Polaron damage, weapon power setting, and 39.4 exotic particle generator, as well as some torp damage. Okay, now we get into the specialized, the really specialized consoles, the important ones. Now, this one, causal anchor, I can only use this one because I'm using the multi mission, the temporal multi mission science vessel. This is the eternal class from the 31st century ships. Now, the causal anchor is nice. It has a nice clicky I can use that does a good amount of damage, but it also has plus 2% exotic damage critical chance, always good, and 15% exotic damage. That's a pretty good bonus there and why I still have it in. Now, the other two, the last two consoles here, we have the Delphic Tear Generator. The Delphic Tear Generator is, oh my God, amazeballs. Not only does it give me plus 5% critical severity, it also gives me plus 20% bonus exotic damage. That is a huge buff to the damage that all of my abilities are going to do. All right, now in addition to that, it has a clickable ability that is effective five kilometers out, okay? And it just devastates, it's a pulse that just devastates everything in front of your ship within five kilometers. Okay, so this is huge. This is absolutely huge and a really good one to have. Now the other one that is considered must have on a science build, so this, the uh, Delphic Terror must have. The other one considered a must have is a constriction anchor, is the constriction anchor. Now I'm gonna be real, the clicky on this absolutely sucks your enemies are going to avoid it. It's not going to get much done. It just, it sucks. However, it has plus 25.3% bonus exotic damage. Now, if you look back at the Delphic Terror, that only has 20% bonus exotic damage, and that was huge. This is even bigger, which is why we can ignore the fact that the clicky sucks and just use it for the bonus exotic damage. Okay. So that is definitely um, where we're at with that. Okay. So we use this for the bonus exotic damage. So that is the gear. Okay. So you noticed I have boosted my EPG up to about 470. I boosted my control to about 300. I could go a little higher with this if I really wanted to. Okay, even them out a little more. But uh, I'm okay with 300. Especially because when I click um, when I click the support configuration on my ship, which is something that I can do, I get plus 40 control expertise as part of my stat. So that brings that up to 348 while that is active, which I always have that active um, when I am flying this ship. All right, and now let's look at stations, okay? 
Yes, I did put it on. Okay. So there is one trade in here or one thing in here I am testing. Okay. So we have here your bread and butter, your trait that hold or your your skill that holds everything together on a space wizard build, and that's your gravity well. Gravity well is going to be the first thing you throw out. It's going to suck everything in. Okay? It is literally going to suck everything in and hold it there. Okay? And then you have your subspace vortex. Subspace vortex is very similar to gravity well. Gravity well also does a large amount of damage. Okay? Subspace vortex is very similar to gravity well in that it's a uh, it's a vortex or an anomaly in space. However, it doesn't have any pull. It does, however, do a lot of damage, more damage, if you look at the numbers here, more damage than the gravity well, okay, by a pretty good amount. But it can't do that damage if nothing's near it. So what we do is we throw out the, the gravity well, and then we chase that immediately with the subspace vortex. And then, just for good measure, because this destabilizing resonance beam here, this does physical damage as well, but it also reduces the damage resistance rating to your enemies. Okay? So, what you do is you throw out your gravity well, get everything sucked in, throw out your subspace vortex, and then throw out your destabilizing resonance beam, and that reduces the resistance to everything that's going on. Then you throw out very cold in space. Okay? Very cold in space is another, it's an, it's an anomaly. They call it a cryonic turbulence. Okay? And this procs spore infused anomalies as well. So not only does this do damage, but it procs or it triggers your spore infused anomalies. All right. And then when everything's just about dead and you need that one little oomph, hit it with delayed overload cascade. And that just, now you want to be careful with this because this will throw everything around. Okay and possibly throw it out of your gravity well. I'm testing this right now. It seems to be doing pretty good, but you got to get the timing right on it. Okay. All right, so those are your main science abilities. All right, then you have your torpedo spread two. This is for your, this is so that you can have uh, spread and get a nice good cloud from the particle emission plasma torpedo. If you're using the gravimetric, which I highly recommend, I haven't got it on this build yet, but I'm working on it. Um, but if you have the gravimetric, use that with, a tor with the torch spread as well, and that'll get you a nice large amount of the uh, gravimetric rifts. Okay, and then a fire at will one. This is to keep my damage, my beams firing, and my damage up in between my ability to shoot off all of my um, exotic abilities. Alright, and then I have to keep my beams buffed. I have emergency power to weapons two, 3 and 2. This keeps my beams going and keeps my emergency weapon cycle on 100% uptime. And then I have for healing, engineering team 1. And then also for healing I have uh, transfer shield strength 1. Science Team 1, and Hazard Emitters 1. Hazard Emitters also cleanses debuffs. So that is why I have that. All right. And that is basically my science build with an in-depth um, explanation of everything I've got and why. And there you go. Now, again, I do want to stress some of this is not current science meta but it is what I prefer and what I found works best for me. So there you go. 
use it as you see fit. Feel free to use it as a jumping off point. So there you go. Enjoy, and I hope you learned something. This is Teacher Kirby signing off.